in the, uh, the lab too. I think he's got the uh, spring 16 exam. I was going to go over some of the spring 15 exam and we can pick up, you know, sure, we had a quiz other questions there. that were left over. Uh, now, I don't know that sequences are necessarily going to be on this uh, this exam uh, because they were covered on the last exam, but uh, we'll go ahead and ask the question anyway. Um, what do you think is the big problem with number one? Um, for the most part, everybody that runs into this question Gets sequences mixed up with series, right? And they keep trying to apply series tests to things that are not series. Uh, so if you're looking at this first test and you're looking at tests for divergence or ratio tests or any of that, doesn't matter, right? Uh, the whole point is these are sequences, not series. So now, which one of these sequences or which of these sequences do not converge? Okay, what does this first sequence do? It's n over n cubed plus one. That just goes to zero, right? Okay, so that was okay. How about sine of n over n squared? It oscillates, but it yeah, it oscillates, but it goes to zero, right? If you had to prove it, you'd probably use the squeeze theorem. So, okay, how about e over pi to the n? Uh, which one's bigger, e or pi? Pi, right? E is like 2.7 something, pi is 3.1 something. So, uh, what I have is something to the n where that something is less than one, right? <laughs> That's going to go to zero. That's a geometric series. Uh, how about n over n plus one, what do you think? It goes to one. Yeah, it goes to one. So, now all this, the question is which one of these do not converge? Uh, it looks like they all converge, uh, so I'm guessing that would be e in that case. All right. Now, next question, same thing, but with series. Well, of course, our results are inaccurate now. <laughs> All right. So, I want to check this out. It's the same series. See, I like this. This is a good question because it differentiates, do you know the difference between a sequence and a series? So, which of the following series do not converge? What do you think of this one? This one's going to converge, I think. I would do uh, another comparison test with uh, sum of 1 over n squared, right? Yeah. How about that second one? Converge p-series. Mm -hmm. What kind of test are you going to do? I would do direct comparison test uh, with the same one, 1 over n squared. Okay. Uh, it'll converge absolutely based on that. Okay. Uh, how about e over pi to the n? Still convergence because e over pi is less than one. Uh, and in fact, what else do we know about it? Uh, this converges to one over one minus e over pi, assuming it starts at zero. Um, and that's because e over pi is less than one. That's a geometric series. Um, and we can write that down. Again, this is multiple choice, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to write all this, but uh, any of these things could turn out as a, as a rising kind of question. How about that first one? Or that last one here? Yeah, this one definitely diverges uh, for test for divergence because the terms go to 1 instead of 0. Uh, so it's that one, right? So uh, even though your sequence terms go to a limit in each of these cases, uh, the series diverges for that last one because the limit's not 0. All right, cool. Now, I've definitely seen these crop up on a lot of recent exams. Uh, find a 40-second partial sum, that kind of thing. So, it would have to be something that you can find the pattern in the partial sums. Now, you're looking at this thing. What kind of series is this? Definitely a telescoping series, right? 
Now, if I want the first partial sum, I would say just write out the first few of them and see if we can get the pattern in it. I know S1 is 1 minus 1 half. S2 is 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third. So it's 1 minus a third. S3 is 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third plus a third minus a fourth. So it's 1 minus a fourth. So what do you notice about the relationship between this index and this number subtracted off? It's one bigger, right? So if I wanted, for example, S42, it's definitely going to be 1 minus something. Do you see where it's going to be 1 minus 1 over 43, not 1 over 42? So, uh, and is that one of the choices? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Now again, if I wrote this, uh, I think I'd also put 1 minus 1 over 42 on there just to mess with you, uh, right? Because uh, it could be one index off. That's mean. Yeah. Why would you do that? The big jerk. He did. So that <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the uh, that's a cardinal rule for studying for exams, right? Is uh, concentrate on what a horrible bastard I am. I know. And uh, <laughs> how do you sleep? And anticipate that question like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sum of the following infinite series. Okay, so the first thing we got to figure out is what kind of a series is this? It's alternating for sure. Now we only know how to find the sums of um, a few different kinds of series, right? So it's got to either be telescoping or geometric for the most part, just metalog. Alright, um, I would say, which one does it look like? Looks like geometric, I think, is what it looks like because it doesn't appear to be telescoping. And take a look at your denominators: three times three times three times three. Uh, your numerators are multiplying by four by four by four, right? So the key to any geometric series is go ahead and factor out the first term out of everything, and then I got one minus. Uh, it'll be what four thirds. Plus, uh, if I take out 2 out of 32, I got 16 over 9. Minus, if I take out 2 from here, I got 64 over 27, and so on. And now it looks geometric. That's the thing. In any of these geometric series, when you factor out the first term, it'll be much more obvious what's happening to the powers uh, when you do that. So, uh, this is 2 thirds. Uh, of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, so it looks like negative 4 thirds to the n. Right, because that's the repeating thing. So it should be 2 thirds times 1 over 1 minus negative 4 thirds. So as long as we can get our arithmetic right, we're okay. Uh, this is, looks like I've got 2 on top, and then 3 times 1 plus 4 thirds on the bottom. So it looks like it is 2 over 3 plus 4, or 2 sevenths. Is that a choice? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be 2 sevenths. Now, I'm curious. Let's see if they're as big of jerks as I am. Uh, if you did a positive 4 thirds instead of a negative 4 thirds, what would you get? You would get 2 over 3 minus 4, and you would get negative 2. But it is a choice, see? Mm. These guys are just as bad as I am. Terrible. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Oh my, big one. All right. Okay, let's see. Which of the following is true about this series? Okay, not even looking at the choices. Do you think this thing converges or not? And what kind of test are you throwing at it? P series is not a test. Test by inversion? Uh, nope. Term still zero. Yeah, some kind of a uh, comparison test, right? So most of the time when you say P series, what you mean is comparison test. Uh, we're going to do a comparison test against the P series. Uh, so we can either do limit or we can do direct. So, and that's what the choices are here. 
So it looks like it's going to converge just because I'm going to compare this to uh, end of the three halves, right? Okay. So I can rule out divergence by test of divergence. I don't think it's going to be that one. Uh, what about D? Divergence or convergence because the terms go to zero. That's red herring, right? That's just seeing if you're foolhardy enough to, uh, to click on that one. So, because you have no idea what you're talking about, you might select it by accident. Um, all right, so we're down to three of them. So it looks like we've got a limit comparison test and a couple of direct comparison tests, right? Now the question is, does the direct comparison test go the right direction or not? What do we need? If we're going to use direct comparison tests, we would need our series to be less than uh, 2 over uh, n to the 3 halves. And the question is, is that true? I don't know. Cross multiply. This would mean that 2 times n to the 3 halves is less than 2 times uh, n to the 3 halves minus 1, which would mean that uh, 0 is less than negative 2. That's definitely not true, right? Yeah. So the problem is with direct comparison, our, uh, our inequality goes the wrong way. Uh, so let's see what's wrong with these two choices here. Um, this just isn't true, right? Okay. And this inequality is true but it's the wrong way to use the direct convergence test, right? Because it says that we're bigger than something that converges, and that doesn't matter, right? So this is improper use of DCT. Okay. And so it's got to be this one. Uh, now, again, metalogicing this thing, is bigger. <laughs> there's two direct comparison tests, and there's one limit comparison test, right? Limit comparison test usually works. So if you have your choice, I think I would use that one, uh, as long as the limit information is correct on there. All right. Oh. Why is C a wrong option? Okay, because this says that ours is bigger than something that converges. So if you're bigger than something that's finite, could be finite, could be infinite. You don't know, right? So it's the wrong direction to use for the direct uh, comparison test. What's up? You know, the biggest problem? Uh -huh. I don't understand how to I mean, if we distribute out the two thirds. Oh, I get caught in the trap. You're right. Is it four thirds? Is it repeating power? Yeah. Ah, you're right. The uh, And nobody caught that but you. That's good. Okay. So, I was just taking a look at this thing. I was thinking it was an easier way to do it. Let's take a look at the work we did. We showed this was two thirds times uh, negative four thirds to the n. You're exactly right. What's wrong with that? Yeah, That's too big, right? These terms are getting bigger instead of smaller. <laughs> That's urgent. So we're good. All right. Now I'm going to do one quick computation here. I was going to say, suppose you do get one that converges. I'm going to do a sample problem that's like this. Let me black this out for just a second.
Now you can handle this the same way, right? You take out the uh, first term, and then what you get is what? One plus a third plus a ninth uh, plus a twenty-seventh, and so on. So this one's one that's actually going to come through. This is one eighth times the sum of uh, one third to the n. Zero to infinity, which would be one eighth. One over one minus a third, which will be one eighth becomes one over two thirds, right? Which will be one eighth becomes three halves, which will be three sixteenths. Did I do that right? And again, you're right to check. We're inside the radius of convergence this time. Just check one thing here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, suppose you have no memory of how to do this, right? You forget what a geometric series is, all of that business. What are you going to do with this question? <laughs> There's a better way to do it than a guess. Think about the information you're given here. What if you just add up those numbers? <laughs> so <laughs> I added up the ones that were given in the problem and I got point eighteen sixty seven. And if you look at three sixteenths with the actual solution to it, you get point eighteen seventy five, which is pretty close, right? So if a geometric series is gonna converge, it's gonna converge pretty quick. So even if you can't remember how to do it, I told people before, don't hesitate to do a smart problem in a stupid way. If that's the only way that you can remember how to do it, right? So I, I think that's a reasonable advice on these questions is um, even if you can't remember how to do it, if you want to know what something sums to, see if you can see the pattern, add up as many terms as you can, and you'll probably get a reasonable estimate of it. All right. Let me do that one. I'll get this back up here. Sorry about the mistake earlier. So, which of the following is always true? First of all, what do we know about the sum of 1 over n to the 3 halves? That converge or diverge? This convergence, right? Because that is actually a p series uh, when p is bigger than 1. Uh, so, okay. So, which one of these statements do we know? Um, a n is smaller than something that converges, so it converges, right? What about b n? What do we know about b n? Being bigger than something that converges, right? Yeah, it could go either way, right? We don't know crap about being. So um, that's definitely not going to be that case. So anything involving something about being, basically we don't know anything about. So it has to be that one. Um, what's the only other way they could change this question? If they give you something like that. Or if they give you a different series, right? What if they... Uh, what if they gave you n to the one half instead of n to the three half? How would that change the outcome of this? Then everything's on the table. It would have to be that one, right? Uh, because the only thing you would know is this is bigger than something that diverges. So you only get one side of it if it's a direct comparison, right? That's the, uh, that's the whole point of that. All right, what else? Okay, well, this is kind of cool. All right. So. First of all, you got negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n factorial. Does that series converge or diverge? It's 
definitely going to converge, right? It'll converge absolutely. You throw it in a ratio test, your limit's going to be zero, right? So uh, it's not going to be E. Uh, anything with a constant on top and a, and a factorial on the bottom, those terms are just blasting their way to zero. It's, it's, uh, uh, they're they're, they're going to go to zero fast enough that it's going to converge. So um, a ratio test says this will converge. Now, the thing I've seen people get trapped in this one uh, is they want to try and do this algebraically, right? Because you remember it's an alternating series, and so you know that your n plus first term uh, is, your, uh, is basically your error, right? So if I want to, uh, let's see, if I want to get my error less than 0 0.0005, uh, what I need is the smallest n so that 1 over n plus 1 factorial is less than 0 0.0005. Okay. So how would you go about doing that? Oh, okay, yeah, like, uh, reciprocal both sides? That seems reasonable. 0 0.0005, reciprocal of that is 2,000. Okay, so this says that n plus 1 factorial is bigger than 2,000. All right, so we only got four numbers, it could be. So if I do 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, Oh, yeah, it'd be 6 factorial. Well, 6 factorial is 720, so that's not big enough. Um, 7 factorial is 5,040. Yeah, so 6 factorial is 720. 7 factorial is 5,040. So that's your threshold, right? So that means 7 has to be n plus 1. So what does that mean? Uh, I only need six terms. Right, because my seventh term, uh, the first term that I leave off is the, uh, it's the bound for my remainder. All right. Okay, so suppose we know the radius of convergence. Well, this is related to the stuff we did on Friday. Suppose we know the radius of convergence of our series uh, is two which the following is always true for the derivative of that series. Well, that's just nonsense. Uh, radius of convergence for the power series f prime. Pretty sure it's also 2. It stays the same. Remember what we talked about on Friday, the interval of convergence may change. So, for example, uh, if this thing is convergent from negative 2 to 2, um, the derivative could be negative 2 to 2, but with brackets or parentheses different, right? The only thing that can change is the endpoints. Uh, so, yeah, the radius of convergence actually stays the same. So, the interval may change at the endpoints, but not the radius. Is that because the uh, radius is just run by AM? Well, it's essentially, yeah, basically, the, uh, because if, um, if I'm looking at x minus a to the n, if I do ratio test with that, I'm going to get the, uh, the radius of convergence, right? But you notice if I differentiate this, I'm going to get n times x minus a to the n minus 1. And the thing is, this extra n out here, you remember the ratio test is immune to things that look like p-series, right? So if I multiply this thing by n, it's not going to change what the ratio is. It might change what happens at the endpoints, but it's not going to change what the, uh, what the actual ratio is. Uh, that's, that's the reason for that. All right. Uh, number nine, I don't think you're going to see use logarithms to find a, you know, um, a limit of a sequence. Um, I haven't seen that show up in a couple of years. I'm, I'm not worried about it. We can go through it, but uh, I'm going to put that off in favor of some of the other ones. Uh, how would you go about that anyway? y n to be that, you look at the log <coughs> of y n, which would be 1 over n of the log of 1 plus n squared, right? This is log of 1 plus n squared over n, 
Uh, do a little bit of a rule on that. Uh, that wouldn't be that bad. All right. Range of the meat of the exam, number 10, convergence or divergence, the following series. All right, so if it converges, find its sum. Aha, do you see the trap on this one? If you look at it and say, oh, 13 over 5 is going to diverge, what trap did you fall into? Yeah. Yeah. 5 is to a 2n power. Five. Yeah, you see where it's actually going to be 13 over 25 is the interesting series here? Right? So, all right. If it converges and find its sum. Now it's definitely a uh, it's a geometric series, so um, I would identify it first. This is a geometric series, right? Because this is equal to uh, if I take out one fifth, then I've got the sum from one to infinity of uh, thirteen over twenty-five to the nth power, right? <laughs> now, this is a little bit tricky because the series starts at 1 instead of at 0, right? Most of our geometric series start at 0. So if I write this out, this is 1 fifth times 13 over 25 plus 13 over 25 squared, and so on. So the question is, how do I handle the fact that I don't have a 1 in here? <coughs> What's it? I could, yes. Yeah. So there's two different ways I can think of to handle it. So either I could say this is one. <coughs> Sorry. One fifth of the whole series <coughs> minus one. Right, because I've got the whole series starting at n equals zero, but I don't have a one on it. Right, and so I could say it is one fifth of one over one minus thirteen twenty fifths minus one. All right, so right because that's the sum of that geometric series. If I was to do it that way, now what have I got left here? This is one fifth of. Uh, so it would be what? If I multiply top and bottom by 25, I've got 25 over, what's 25 minus 13? 12. 12, okay. 25 over 12 minus 12 over 12, right? Which is one fifth of uh, 13 over 12. So 13 over 60 is what that should be. All right. So. Let's try it a different way. Can you see another way to start from here? Well, we can factor out the first term. Like we usually do, right? Uh, we can say this is equal to 1 fifth times 13 over 25 times 1 plus 13 over 25 plus 13 over 25 squared, and so on, right? So instead of having the term, the whole series minus the first term, I've got the whole series with the first term factored out. That's the nice thing about geometric series, they work this way. So this is 13 over 125 times 1 over 1 minus 13 25 which is 13 over 125 times, again, top and bottom by, um, by 25. I've got 25 over 12, right? That is going to come out to the same thing five times. So I've got 13 over 60. It comes out the same way either way. Oh, and I've neglected a key thing here. Right? I found the sum assuming that it converges, but I, you know, I could have made the same mistake as I did in the other question, right? So, I would say 
it converges because it's a geometric series. So that's uh, that's good enough for that. Uh, another way you could show that it converges, if you wanted to go to the ratio test, you could, uh, but that wouldn't help you in finding the sum. Uh, so you might as well go ahead and just quote that it's a geometric series. I think that's the easiest way to get through that. You okay on this one? Okay. Next one. So, what is this crying out for? Ratio. ratio test. You see factorial? It's got to be ratio test. All right. So, your nth term is n factorial over 2n factorial. Your n plus the first term is n plus 1 factorial over what? 2n plus 2, right? Again, you see what the trap is, right? <coughs> because I'm substituting in for n plus 1. If I have 2 times n plus 1, I get 2n plus 2, not 2n plus 1. So, all right. Now, what I need is the limit, because then goes to infinity, of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value, right? And I know for a fact, if you don't put limit on every one of these, uh, if you start calculating the limit, now if you go ahead and just do the ratio and simplify it and then put the limit at the end, that's okay. But if you start out writing limit and then you forget to write limit, I've seen people lose a bunch of points over that just because you're supposed to be taking a limit. So, you know, there are notation hounds around here, so. 